Hello and welcome everyone to Cyversus webinar series. I'm Tina Lee, Cyversus User Engagement Officer, and we hope you'll join us every Friday through December 3rd for our webinars on technology, platform, and science topics. Many of you already use Cyverse and know that we are a National Science Foundation funded cyber infrastructure project. These webinars help fulfill a key part of our mission to train scientists on how to use Cyverse's computational resources to do their research and teaching. Let's quickly take care of housekeeping and then we'll start with Michael's webinar. Uh, the presentation today is roughly 30 minutes with time at the end for your questions. Please open the Zoom chat window, type your questions there. I'll read them at the end um, and Michael can answer. Um, as always, we do record these uh, webinars and we will post them on our website uh, for your viewing enjoyment at any time. Cyverse offers intensive trainings such as our foundational open science skills and container technology workshops. Visit our website at www.cyverse.org for more information on these trainings using cloud-based tools and techniques for collaborative open science. And now I'd like to introduce today's pre presenter, Michael Kulshaw -Shaw Maurer, Cyverse's postdoc on our science and training team. Michael received his PhD in ecology from the University of California at Davis, and now splits his work effort on improving the computational and quantitative education resources for researchers across a wide range of fields. And he does that at both Cybers and the Carpentries. His hobbies include photography, racquetball and lacrosse, camping, canoeing, hiking, and thrift shopping. And although we have not yet tested his gourmet skills at the Cybers potlucks, he does say he likes Sonoran hot dogs, so I think we'll let him stay in our clubhouse for now. Welcome, Michael. Uh, thank you for the introduction, Tina. Um, welcome, everyone. Yeah, so today we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, data management with Cybers. Uh, going to be doing a little bit of brief intro, uh, and then we'll move into a live demo. I'm going to show you through some of the features of our data store and various ways you can work with data um, on Cybers. So briefly, just want to talk about the idea of the data life cycle. So I think uh, early on in at least my scientific career, sort of thought about data as something that you collect, they serve a single purpose for you, and you sort of move on uh, it, with, with whatever you're going to do next. But I think it's worth uh, thinking a little bit about shifting your mindset towards your data not necessarily being a static thing, but something that uh, can be a living, breathing part of the uh, world of scientific research. So I, I sort of, I, I think often about how much useful data uh, sits locked away in filing cabinets, in labs, or in, uh, you know, on farms, uh, or sitting on someone's hard drive where it never gets touched, never sees the light of day after it's been used for some small purpose. Uh, but I think it's worth thinking about your data being part of a, an ongoing cycle. So we sort of use this uh, life cycle to describe generally how your data might uh, progress through different stages. So start with planning. Obviously, uh, we don't just run out to uh, collect data. Uh, there's some plan in place for what are you going to collect, what are you going to do with it, actual data collection, which looks very different depending on field and study and many, many different aspects. Uh, moving through to assurance, uh, checking the quality of the data, uh, ensuring that they uh, that we have made mistakes as best we can. Uh, describing and preserving the data are something we're going to get into a little bit today using metadata. So ensuring that your data uh, aren't just, you know, uh, sensible to you, but that other people uh, will be able to interact with them. Uh, preserving them, uh, we all have heard horror stories of someone uh, losing a hard drive and losing years worth of work and uh, all sorts of stuff like that. So ensuring that we can preserve our data, which is again something we'll talk about a little bit today. Next is sort of Maybe this stage, the discover stage, is something that happens with someone else. So someone else discovers your data, integrates it into their own work, uh, and then we go through analysis. Maybe that's you doing the analysis, maybe that's someone else using your data in a meta-analysis or in some other context. 
And the results of that analysis maybe lead to more planning for other data collection. And we see this life cycle continue. So uh, there are ways we can make our data more accessible, more open, so that they can be integrated into this life cycle in a more a way with more longevity and uh, less just locked away on our computers. So there's a framework uh, that we teach in the Foundational Open Science Skills Workshop that uh, is useful for thinking about how to make our data more uh, open, accessible, uh, usable by others, how to make, ensure that they can be integrated into this data lifecycle a little bit. And this is called the FAIR uh, data, which is an acronym. We'll walk through what each step of that means. So it's a set of principles for data management and stewardship, uh, not necessarily um, hard and fast rules that you must adhere to completely, because there are differences in uh, how open and accessible we can make our data uh, depending on our domain. So if you work with health data, that may have different uh, privacy concerns than if, like me, you work with insects and you know the aphids don't really care if you share their data. So you can read more about this at gofair.org. You can read the paper uh, published on this set of principles and read more about, uh, you can find tools, how to ensure that your data meet these principles. We'll walk through briefly what each of them, uh, uh, which of each of the components mean. So F is findable. So first of all, your data need to be findable by others. Uh, so if they are just locked away on your computer, obviously uh, it's very limited in their findability. And there's sort of two components to this. One is that they should be findable by humans and sort of something we're coming to recognize is more and more important is that they should also be findable by machines. So uh, a lot of this has to do with the way we um, describe them with metadata. So using keywords and things that can be picked up by machines uh, so that when people are doing uh, automated detection of data for you know, meta-analyses or larger scale analysis, your data are uh, findable in those contexts as well. A is accessible. So the, your data uh, can't just be found, but they need to be accessed then. Um, and the FAIR data uh, describes um, ways that you can use standard protocols for access. Uh, if there needs to be some sort of authorization or authentication, that that process is done in a standardized way so that you know, you're not uh, um, doing something completely kind of weird or, or strange for someone to get access to your data. Interoperable uh, means that the data should be used in multiple contexts. If they're in some strange, inscrutable file format that's uh, unique to whatever you're doing, uh, and not easily used by others, uh, that makes their accessibility fairly limited. So a lot of this is, you know, to make it usable in multiple contexts, ensuring that it's formatted in a certain way, that we're using file formats that are uh, standard, like a CSV file for tabular data is pretty much universally usable. And finally, R, it needs to be reusable. So it needs to be well described with metadata uh, such that anyone who comes across it can uh, learn what it's about, uh, be able to you know, recognize whether they can incorporate it into their work. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about how Cybers makes it easy to associate metadata with data as well. So now we're actually going to go into a demo of Cyber. So we're going to walk through uh, using the data store, uh, which is uh, Cyber's data storage platform that sort of underlies everything else that goes on in Cyber. Uh, so I'm going to stop that screen share. Just get the Zoom screen out of the way. Make sure my notifications are turned off. All right. So we're going to, yeah, we're just going to sort of watch as I go through. Um, all right, can I get a quick thumbs up if you can see my screen? Can we make sure? All right. Yes. I think I'm good here. Okay. So to get to the uh, data store and access it on Cybers, uh, once you have a Cybers account created, you can go to de.cybers.org, which will take you to the discovery environment, which is a platform for 
uh, doing all sorts of uh, scientific analysis, and it's also an interface to the data store. So once we go here, we can go log in. I'll log into my Cyverse account. And now uh, we can see on the left hand side here, we have a bunch of different things we can go to. Right now in the DE, I'm looking at analyses that I've done, but I want to go to the data store, which is this icon. You see a little data pop up. So we can go here, and where you're automatically directed to is uh, your home directory. So the data store is organized like the file system would a file system would be on your computer. So you can have a direct you have a home directory. You can have subdirectories and folders filled with data. So I can see that here. Um, I can go and I'll just show you. Uh, first, we'll basically show you how to upload data into here uh, into the DE. Ver, uh, sorry, into the data store through a point and click interface like this. So if I look into my data folder, got nothing in here right now. So I could go and I could click upload and I could browse locally and I could go find, um, find my data that I want to put into here. Uh, I could also, so we can go through this. Uh, there we go. So I could do something like upload my test data CSV. Uh, what's also nice is you can, so we see my upload pops up here. I can click on here and actually view a preview of the data. For larger data, this is uh, maybe not as practical, but we can see the uh, my little CSV pop up here. So I can go back to this folder. Uh, you can also drag and drop just from like the finder window. So I could take my test, more test data and just drag that into here and see that it is queued for upload. There we go. That popped up as well. So to remove uh, data from here, I can click this button, go to more actions, and let's say I want to move that to the trash. So that gets uh, started the deletion process, and that'll disappear in a second here. So pretty nice, uh, you know, we can we can interact with it here. But um, these sorts of uh, using the, the web interface like this uh, can be a little bit uh, a little bit slow for bigger or uploading many files at once. So we don't recommend it for anything other than just like a quick little upload like this. Uh, instead, we can use a couple different uh, ways to interact with uh, with the data store. So one of them is through uh, a point and click application called Cyberduck. So it's a third party application. Uh, you can download it uh, to find out how to get that set up. We can go to learning.cybers.org, take us here. I can go to the data store guide, which is everything you could want to know about the data store. You can come here to read about it. So I can go to drag and drop data transfer with Cyberduck, and we'll show you how to set up and configure uh, your Cyberduck such that you can access your data store files. But I'll open up Cyberduck. And so this is what it looks like. It, um, it looks pretty similar to my finder window here, um, but uh, I can access my uh, data store. So I have to refresh my connection. There we go. All right, so my test data now appears here. We can do the same sort of thing where I could move my more test data into the data folder. That will get queued up, and you can watch that upload happen, and my upload's complete. So you can see it happens very quickly. Uh, you can go and delete files as well. So uh, Cyberduck will perform more quickly for doing uh, multiple uh, uploads of many files. Uh, it works for large files, and uh, it'll be certainly quicker than doing uh, doing it directly in the web interface. So. Cyberduck is sort of this nice in between where we can have a, a, an application that's still very easy to use, but is going to give us a little more uh, speed and a little more flexibility to work with large amounts of data. Now, the third way 
that'll show you how to interact with uh, the data store and move data back and forth is going to be the uh, using I commands. So you can read more about I commands uh, here, again, on the uh, learningcyrus.org, the uh, data store guide, you can go to command line transfer with I commands. So I commands is a series of uh, command line options that will, or command line commands that will uh, allow you to move data back and forth, similar to how you would just move things around in a Unix file system. So I can open up a terminal window and I can see I've got some data here and I have this folder called storms by year which contains a bunch of CSVs on uh, hurricane data for uh, each year going back to 1975. So I can upload, uh, I can actually, once you have I commands set up and installed, uh, you can run commands uh, similar to, you know, a command like PWD that would do print working directory, which tells me where on my computer I am. I can do IPWD, which will tell me where am I in my, uh, where am I in terms of my data store home directory? Excuse me, Michael, we have yep. a request for you to increase your um, view size on your uh, screen. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Here, let's see. Oh gosh, that did not do what I wanted it to. Let me see if, I apologize for this folks. My uh, my other terminal doesn't like to do that. Okay, how's that look? Is that a little better for folks? Yes, more clear, thank you. Okay, let's get back to where, okay. All right, getting back to my data webinar here. All right, so now I have this uh, storms by year here. Um, so getting back to I commands, I can uh, check where I am. So now I'm in my home directory. Um, I can check that and we'll get this I plant home call shop mower. So you might see I plant pop up at times during like setting up stuff with the uh, uh, Cyberduck or using I commands. That's because I plant was the name of Cyverse uh, when it first started and which has since grown, but many of the underlying bits of architecture still refer to I plant. So if you see that, don't worry, nothing's going wrong. Uh, I plant uh, uh, is what you wanna see. So we can use some of our familiar command line commands. So like ILS will list out the contents of my uh, home directory in in the or in the uh, data store. So if we look here, we'll see the same thing show up here as in my home directory here. So those match up. It's good. It's what we want to see. So uh, to move things back and forth, uh, we can use uh, the I put command. So let's say I want to upload my storms by year, all of I want to do that whole uh, directory with all the data it contains into my data directory. So I can go here and I would run. So LS tells me what's currently in my local directory on my computer. So I want to move this whole storms by year directory. So I can run I put and then we'll give it some command line arguments. So we'll do R because we want to recursively move every file inside that folder. We want P and T, which are some other options. We can see a progress bar, which is quite nice. And then I'll say storms by year. And I want to put that into uh, slash I plant slash home. Then your username, so call Sham hour, and then my data folder. If I run that. I see I start getting these nice little outputs telling me how many files have been moved. And if I refresh this page, I'll see storms by year showing up. And you know, if I keep refreshing, we'll see uh, those files start showing up here. 
So the command line options are um, a nice way to interact in scripts and to more directly uh, move large amounts of data back and forth. So these are kind of the three main ways to interact and move data between your computer and, uh, and the data store. Uh, but we're also going to show you some of, some of the other features that the data store offers. So um, beyond just moving data around and having a secure backup of your data, uh, uh, the data store allows us to incorporate some of those FAIR principles and move our data maybe into that more uh, continuous data life cycle. So uh, there are a couple of things we're going we're gonna to walk through. So one of them is uh, I'm going to show you how to associate metadata with uh, a particular file or even a folder that contains a whole bunch of data. So we'll click on storms by year. Uh, we can go up to more actions. And then uh, we can do metadata. So if we click on metadata here, uh, we have currently there's no metadata for this directory. So I can add things by clicking to add metadata. Now I've got this uh, unit that's a new attribute. I can add sort of whatever field I want here by editing it. Let's say I want to call this the source. And I know I got these data from the rdplyr package. And it cites that those data are from NOAA. Copy that link address. This is just an example, right? I can say, here we go, done. Now this shows up as an attribute of my data. Click save to get my metadata there. All right, so now that metadata is saved. So it might be uh, kind of a pain to upload each, uh, you know, individually add each single piece of metadata, particularly if you want your metadata to meet some sort of a standard. So we can actually um, go here and select templates. So for more actions, we can do view and template, and we can use various uh, already created uh, templates for our metadata. So let's just, for example, click the Dublin Core one, click select. So now we have uh, this form that has all these different fields, as well as their uh, uh, descriptions. So a descriptor of what should go into that field. Um, and we'll see that the ones with the asterisks next to them are required in order to use this template. So I can fill out all of this information and hit save, and it will fill out all of the metadata necessary for this template. So uh, they're, uh, uh, working with metadata here is a very powerful way to make our data more accessible particularly to hit that R, uh, the reusable part, right? Ensuring that our data can't just be found, but that they can actually be useful once they are found. So that's how we can work with metadata. Um, there are a couple other really slick things we can do uh, uh, with our data here. One thing that we might wanna do upon, uh, you know, maybe we've tagged all of our data with metadata, uh, and we want to request a DOI for it, right? We want our data to have a di digital object identifier. Uh, maybe this is for a publication, but we wanna be able to share this data in a, um, in a permanent way. And uh, the way we do that is we can click uh, again next to a single uh, data file or next to uh, a folder containing all of our data. Once again, we go up to more actions and then we can do request DOI. So you'll see this little uh, DOI thing pop up. Now, what you should do is open this link, the DOI manual, and read through uh, all of the information here uh, that you will need to do uh, to prep your data for a DOI request. So it walks you through, through each of the steps that you'll need in order to uh, receive a DOI from Cyrus. Uh, then once you've ensured that you meet all of these requirements, you can click the I need a DOI. And then this will get sent off to an actual person who will uh, review your request. 
uh, basically going to review the metadata review that you've meeten, uh, sorry, that you've met all of those uh, requirements, and then we'll either approve or uh, suggest edits and things you need to change in order to get the DOI approved. So the DOI uh, review process is not in any way a review of your data themselves, but rather the organization and metadata uh, necessary to receive the DOI. Uh, so a couple other things that make working with the data store quite nice uh, is that it integrates very well with uh, the rest of the cyber uh, platforms. So if you want to do analyses in uh, either one of our DE apps uh, that are command line apps, or if you want to use something like a vice app, so maybe you want to analyze your data in uh, R Studio running on the cloud, well, it's quite easy to uh, share both the application and our data necessary with a uh, uh, with a collaborator. So if you have a collaborator who's on Cybers, let's say I want someone to uh, be able to do some Bayesian analysis using Stan and R Studio, and let's say I want to uh, I want to share. Let's see. To add this to the bag. Okay. One sec. I can't find that link. I'm going to show you how to add data to the bag. So there's this thing called the bag, uh, which is a way to share uh, multiple items of both data and uh, non uh, uh, and, and applications with another user on Cybers. So let's say I want to share my storms by year data with someone. I can click here and I can just hit share, which is pretty nice. I can look up, like, let's say I want to share it with, with Ryan. I can add Ryan so that he can now read and access. I can say I want him to be able to read or write or own the data in Storms by Year. So you can quickly give someone access, uh, give access to another Cypress user. I can also add this to my bag, which is here. So I can also then add apps. I can add other uh, relevant things here and share all at once a whole collection of things maybe necessary for doing some analysis with another uh, Cybers user. Uh, finally, uh, an another way we can share our data with uh, people who maybe aren't using Cybers is to generate a public link. So this works on a single data file at once. Can't do it for a whole folder. If you wanted to do it for a folder, you could like upload a zip file and just do it for a single file like that. The way we do it is we can check a box, uh, then go to more actions, and then public links. So this will create a public link for this, uh, this file, this CSV file. And I can then copy that public link. So now if I go and share this with someone else and they you know, open that link up, it will then prompt them to download that file. So I could download that data file to my downloads folder, and there it is. So that's a quick way to share uh, data with folks who aren't also on Cybers. But as we see, sharing data within uh, with other Cybers users allows us to uh, access a few more of the features that we uh, might want to use in the data store. So, that is basically the rundown of some of the some of the key features and some of the cool new features that we have for working with data in the data store. Uh, if you continue uh, along with the webinar series, uh, we're going to cover more things like working with Vice and working with some of the analysis platforms in Cybers. And uh, we can uh, you'll see that the data store sort of undergirds all of these other platforms and interfaces with them really, really smoothly. So you can access your data in the data store from anywhere else in Cybers, which uh, makes it quite powerful and quite quick to use that whole workflow. So that is about it for me. Um, I will stop my screen share here. And I think Tina was going to manage questions. Uh, I'm happy to try to show anything else in Cyverse itself. If any of the questions would be good, I can pop back to the screen share. Thank you, Michael. Yeah, 
that was great. And I appreciate you covering so much and, and showing off the new user interface. It's not that new. It was really started in February, but it's a lot more point and click, uh, as well as we still have the ability to do command line things too for people. And Michael showed you a little bit about that. We do have a few questions. So if you don't mind, I'll hold on. Um, is Globus available in the DE? I don't know what Globus is. Okay. Um, we, to the person who asked that, that's uh, Tom, I will get back with you on that or send me an email afterwards and we can respond to that. I can also put that into the um, website page. Any questions that we don't have answers for today? Another question is, can you load a file directly from NCBI to the data store without using command line? I believe so. And I think you would do that through the URL upload. So I've never done that with NCBI data, but I can show what um, I'll briefly show just how we would use the. Uh, you know who uses NCBI stuff is like Ryan. I can always ask him to do a little demo yeah, that we can post. Be, yeah, we can do you can uh, from the upload command, you can upload and do import from a URL. Uh, so yeah, I, presumably if, if you have URL access to uh, to files that you can put them in, in here as well. Uh, yeah, so Ryan does a lot with NCBI data. And I know my assumption is that there's quite a nice way to do it because if you look at our uh, metadata templates, uh, many of them are NCBI uh, metadata templates. So um, yeah, you can, uh, that's a that's a good question, but yeah, I think Ryan would have would know how, how to do that. Okay, thanks. Next question is, um, can you use custom templates for metadata, and how would you generate a custom template? That's a good question. I don't know that there are more uh, templates. You could ask that question in our uh, intercom. Chat. So uh, that would be my recommendation. My guess is there is a way to upload custom templates. I know that there are, uh, you can use more templates like ones described here at fairsharing.org. Uh, but yeah, it that's might, the... Yeah, it might take some help from our science and dev teams to do that. So it would be something to request in, uh, as Michael said, using the intercom or the, the chat. Mm -hmm. um, is there a max file size, file number, or total storage max? Yeah, so there is a there is a default. Uh, I believe, I think it's a one hundred gig limit per account uh, to start. But you can make requests for ex uh, expanded storage. I'm not actually sure on max file size, uh, but I know that yeah, per account. It's 100 gigabytes to start. You can request uh, more storage. Basically, we'll just want to know what you're going to be using it for. Uh, so yeah, there are people who store terabytes of data on, uh, on the data store. And I did ask our dev team, because this question had come up in my use of it, um, bags. There's no limit to the number of files you can include in a bag the issue then becomes how long it takes then to download and share right so but yes so there's lots of um lots of flexibility in our our ui um let's see so this would be appropriate for image files to files that could be analyzed in bis yeah as we like to say and michael can can confirm data is data and cybers is data agnostic right so all we see is stuff from the back end, right? We don't know whether it's an image file or a, or a CSV file of data or things. And BISC is one of our platforms um, that does image analysis. So as Michael said, the underlying data store is accessible by each of the platforms. So it makes having your data available in any platform you're using in Cybers. And Michael, did you wanna to add to that? I know that you use a lot of platforms. No, I think I think that's great. Um, yeah, I, I I think yeah, I think I I would say you can you can store any data that you can transfer from your computer. You can put on the on the data store. And I, I've never used BISC as a platform. I don't really do much image analysis. Uh, but if it can access it in the data store, then yeah, you can upload uh, 
tip files, any, any files you want there. Uh, yeah. Um, so last question, I sorry. This last question. Um, <laughs> if, if you're running IRODs locally, can you transfer directly to Cybers IRODs? So I don't know the exact answer to that question. Uh, again, a good one for the, for the dev team. Um, but there is, uh, this is sort of how we like to envision the, or, or visualize the components of, of Cybers. So, you know, at the very bottom of this layer cake, as we like to call it, we've got actual hardware resources. Um, on the top layer, what we were showing you is like the DE and the data store, these, these platforms. But what sort of exists in between is a series of services that, that manage the hardware resources at a lower level uh, and then are sort of stitched together. These purple building blocks are put together to create these various applications. But these building, these purple building blocks can be accessed more directly. So uh, uh, yeah, that would be a good question to ask if you can uh, interface those two IRODs. But uh, because IRODs itself is a service that's uh, accessible, um, that should be, I think that would likely to be doable. If IRODs can do it, I think we can make it happen. Uh, but that's a, yeah, that's a question. Uh, again, if you want to go to um, uh, intercom, that would be a great place to, uh, to ask that or, you know, send a, a message. And then cost to user. Uh, Tina, do you have information on that? I don't have it at my fingertips, but yes, there is cost for storage available. Um, it's based on terabytes and it, you know, we have basic uh, tiers and things, but it's like, depending on how many copies of your data, mirrored storage, all that kind of thing. So um, again, feel free to send us an intercom message. I know we've kind of hidden that on our website because not very many people necessarily uh, at at this point are using it, but we are working towards building that. What Michael said about um, requesting additional storage, we do allow up to, I think, 10 uh, terabytes of data. You have to fill out a form and tell us exactly what you'll be doing in terms of the analysis. And it's for a certain period of time. So it's for active analysis, but 10 terabytes is a boatload of data. So that should get most people to a point. Um, Cybers isn't intended as a, as a long-term data repository. It's really for active analysis. Getting a DOI will help you then when you publish and stuff. So are there any other questions for Michael? Okay, thank you so much everyone for attending. Um, I wanted to let you know that in two weeks, Jason Williams, who's one of our trainers, will take us through VICE, which Michael pointed out today. VICE is a part of the discovery environment where you can visualize and interact with your data and analyses using cloud-based integrated development environments like Jupyter Notebooks, RStudio, and containers. So to register for that, please visit our website. And thanks, everyone. And thank you, especially Michael. Thank you. And VICE is really cool. You should all go to that one as well. VICE is <laughs> really and I have to tell you, Michael, based on your um, taglines, we came up one. I don't know if you saw it, but we yeah, said Cybers Vice, yeah. a virtuous habit for your cloud addiction. So please join us in two weeks. We'll see you all then. Bye now. Thank you, everyone.